Who's the radio operator of the spacefaring vessel, LB-01? We were given the mission of broadcasting the serialized gaming podcast, Safe Space, to as many people as we possibly could. If you can hear this message, then clearly it's been a success. If that's the case, then you should know that what you're about to listen to is a tabletop role-playing game where five people roll dice and tell a story of science fiction and survival horror using the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. It was originally formatted for YouTube, but the records have been modified for an optimal audio experience. However, be warned, this is a survival horror podcast, and there may be descriptions of violence, gore, psychological terrors and mental trauma that some listeners may find disturbing. If you're still out there, then make sure you have your stim packs ready and whatever refreshments you may need. I'm starting the data recording playback now. This is Safe Space. Episode 5, audio file name, warning shots. Last session, the crew of the O'Brien escaped from a satellite relay station that was far more dangerous than it looked. A monstrous creature that was part machine and part organic matter attacked them, and in the chaos the crew only just managed to escape, but it was not without a cost, and the android known as Dick Sloan was torn in two. The moment the crew got back to the ship, Zam Brazel stepped to the industrial laser cutter and then, like a pro, obliterated the station and cut the monstrous beast in two on his second shot. Meanwhile... (laughs) (laughs) Meanwhile, (laughs) Wendy and Dr. Forrest washed any potential contamination from their suits, then took what was left of their android to the captain. What followed was a sombre moment as the crew came together to say goodbye to one of their own. At least for now, as Sloan was put into storage until he could be properly repaired. And so the crew continued onwards to their next job. But before that happened, the captain decided to bring someone out of cryosleep to help them. That someone was Blaze Kelvin, a member of Beta Shift and former military man with little tact but eager to do his job. And he's also got a snazzy suit, which you might hear about in a, <laughs> in a moment. He immediately made an impact, but not necessarily the most positive, and instead rubbed up the rest of the crew who were still reeling from their loss the wrong way with his bull-in-a-china-shop attitude. Over the next few days of travel, the crew attempted to recover, rest and de-stress. This proved easier for some than others, as Wendy began suffering from hideous nightmares of techno-organic horrors mixed with glimpses of a life she was trying possibly to move on from. Eventually they reached the whole reason for the overtime that had turned into into more trouble than it was worth. The executive class ship called the Icarus. A luxury cruise ship for the rich and connected. It was having communication issues, as as you do. And the O'Brien was called in to fix them. And so the crew made their way over 
led this time by one Dr. Forrest, who was asked by the captain to see if he could talk those within the luxury vessel to help them out with some much needed parts that could help the crew and the O'Brien get home. But when they got there, they found no welcoming committee or folks to tell them where to do their work. In fact, there was no one at all. And that's where we pick up our game this week. But first, before we get stuck into it and the description, the crew have accumulated a certain amount of stress <laughs> over the past few sessions. And we did some rolls and, and comfort saves, as I talked about, and uh, some of them actually succeeded and managed to be a little less stressed than they were before, although I think you're still... Apart from Blaze Kelvin, who is... I mean, he's he's walking. He's a walking stress conductor, I'd imagine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, there's a cucumber. <laughs> but the rest of the crew, you're still feeling the effects of of you know this overtime, aren't you? I think. Yep. So, in terms of players, it's a case of like being savvy, being being thoughtful, picking your battles. Or believing in the roll of the dice. You know, you can still have high stress and still just roll above your, your stress. You know, just don't panic and stuff. It's fine. Everything will be fine. So, as they entered the Icarus... Just, just stop it. You know, the more you reassure <laughs> us, the less reassured we feel. So just just, just don't even. Okay, okay. I'm just going to add a point to stress just for that. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I, it's like, I'm, I try to be nice viewers i do try to be nice um but no as you um enter the the icarus you pass um the pressurization sequence and the vac you were able to take off your vac suits put your dirty and grimy vac suits alongside some nicer ones that that belonged to the icarus itself and um at that point Wendy did take a moment. She saw a little bit of... I mean, these are sleek, white, grey, silver with some gold piping and some silver piping and, you know, very decorative. Wendy took a moment to chip away, um, turned away from the security cameras and uh, took off... How, How big was the strip you took off, Wendy, of this gold piping? Well, I'm guessing it kind of went like over a shoulder yeah would have been yeah so maybe sort of (laughs) (laughs) just under a foot okay nice sort of yeah yeah Yeah. so you've got that in your inventory um i don't know what craft projects may be available on this ship but (laughs) and then you um you got through to the entrance hall of the icarus so we'll just go back a couple of scenes before we caught up um and this for the benefit of the viewers at home this isn't a standard sort of starship entrance this is a proper titanic cruise liner kind of extravagance and opulence it's a almost a ballroom entrance kind of room sleek design um like just think high-tech sleek futuristic design mixed with art deco illustration and decoration you can see on the sides there are hollow screens playing footage of babbling brooks and calming vistas and the whole thing just screams money. And definitely there to be a statement as soon as you walk onto this ship. The The entrance hall itself is a large room. And in the centre of it, you can see there's an enormous and magnificent looking spiral staircase. That winds around and disappears into the floor above. Uh, emblazoned, you can see it's, it's sort of carved and emblazoned with intricate metallic shapes and mouldings of... Clouds, suns, and different. There's all sorts of winged creatures and ships throughout history disappearing up into the floors above. Um, It's all made to look like a sort of classic wooden design, accented in gold and brass. The floor itself is made to look like it is wooden floorboards, but um, Blaze Kelvin. Uh, in last session, did stamp down on the floor, and the and the echo proved that maybe this wasn't as solid oak as it seemed to be, but it was still an impressive sight. And just just to paint this picture, Gavin, because this is the first time ever, everyone sort of 
seen Blaze Kelvin. Blaze Kelvin walked onto this ship. He was obviously in his vac suit, but he's mm-hmm. he's not dressed. The rest of the crew are, you know, sort of. Um, actually, what do the the players look like? And we'll get to play. We'll get to Blaze la- last. So as you step onto this opulent cruise liner of a ship, as you're stood in this entrance hall, what does Zam look like? Just describe what Zam looks like. So Zam's got his dirty, oily overalls on, but they're like half done, tied around his waist, and he's got his dirty, sweaty, oily vest. <laughs> so he's he's looking really at home amongst the opulence. <laughs> what does Wendy look like? Uh, so so Wendy is wearing kind of standard overall kind of. I've written day wear here. Yeah. <laughs> Which, well, is I'm it the sort of like I'd imagine like these are sort of like boiler suit flight suits, you know, like um the boiler suit like yeah. like Ripley yeah. had in the first Alien. Like it's just a standard sort of. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Very mm. practical. Um, quite neat, quite tidy. Um, a few little embellishments. You know, maybe just a couple of things drawn on. Mm. Yeah. Uh, what does a Doctor Forest? Look like. Uh, no, knowing on, that he's been he's, hit, he's the mouthpiece PJ. Knowing he's going to be interacting with people. How did the doc dress? <laughs> As he always does. But he left his <laughs> he left his doctor's white coat in the uh, in the O'Brien. Uh, so he's sort of wearing his his khaki trousers with grey boots, and they're like a beige shirt that's open a bit further down than it should be, so everyone can see his gold medallion that he wears. Um, and he's got his hip flask in his pocket. And finally, Blaze Kelvin, the new member of the crew from Beta Shift, who is now sort of a, a sub for Alpha Shift. What does Blaze look like? Uh, knowing that this is, is a fancy ship <laughs> full of rich folk, uh, Blaze has decided to, to dress in his, uh, his dressing room. Dress his his whites, which is the the, the most formal of the uniform, uh, uh, marine commander. He's looking Completely like completely practical um, for maintenance work. Yeah, was it Richard Gere? What's the film? Richard Gere from, uh, from Officer and uh, a Officer and a Gentleman. Officer and a Gentleman. Yeah. yeah. So, <clears throat> you know, he looks the part. What a what a picture! Imagine that. I didn't bring the hat. <laughs> I was going to say, um, Zam's got his uh, hand welder and his nail gun and some tools on and his you've got tool some belt. Tool, yeah, you've got your tool kits. Yeah. Like box of tools as well. Yeah. But yeah, looking greasy and sweaty. and Yeah. But ready to do the job. Yeah. And as you step into this large, I mean, the staircase is right in front of you. And you can see a, a vid screen and there seems to be a... You, I mean, you can see a few doors dotted around and some of them are sort of, say, say crew only. Um, but when you begin stepping in, a holographic display screen immediately sort of bursts into life with the face of an old famous actor appearing, smiling at you with perfect makeup, hair and teeth far too white for them to be original. Um, as they start speaking to you, or as you step in, in a imagine the classic sort of tourist welcome to your flight kind of video. He also looks like he's had quite a bit of work done. So he's got a, a bit of an uncanny, uncanny valley kind of look. Um, it's disconcerting, trying to be charming. And obviously very, very expensive. As this actor's like, Welcome to the Icarus. The diamond in the crown of the echelon, Sojourn Fleet, and the ultimate in luxury travel. You are about to embark on a journey that few will ever get to experience. And one that you will never forget. Please allow our concierge to take your carry-on luggage. And they will guide you to your room via the famous Wings of Icarus Grand Staircase. A -a one-of-a-kind piece designed by the galaxy-famous architect Elias Corvi, especially for this vessel. It boasts between 300 and 400 depictions of flight throughout history. And it goes on and on. 
beginning to talk about. And the players may ask me to do this, but I'm oh, going no, to tell... This, this I... is really interesting. I'd love to hear more. Don't do this to me, <laughs> is it? Um, Because, funnily enough, I, re- I haven't written an entire script <laughs> for the introduction to a flight. Um, but I gave it a good go. You do hear about... Um, from the finest cuisine available 24-7 to our unmatched range of entertainment and relaxation options. The Icarus truly has something for everyone. And as the figure does that, you can see like projections of like <laughs> people rolling dice and like just sort of swimming and someone getting a massage and all kinds of just opulence and extravagance and complete bullshittery that um, <laughs> these rich vessels probably have. But as the video is is sort of rolling on. You look around and you realise you're you've been here for a couple of minutes and there's no one else here. What do you do? Well, Zam's just gonna walk straight through the hologram just to get past it. <laughs> you see it sort of <laughs> Is is there any sign of any like communications panel or anything in this room? Not in this particular room. Okay. Zam, where would the parts we need be? And the bit we need to fix, I guess. Uh, Well, parts are going to be down in the engine bay. Well, why don't we head that way, then? We're going to have to uh, head for communications for uh, fixing the, uh, the car relays. So which do you want to do first? you want to try and steal engine parts or actually do the job we're here for? Well, when you put it like that, let's fix the communications first. It's probably best that we actually look like uh, we're here to do a job before we mug off these rich fools. As they're talking... Uh, speaking, speaking of... Where is everyone? No, uh, no, they're probably all off getting drunk somewhere. In my experience, these people hate commoners. They're probably hiding from us. Don't be a kind of welcoming committee. <laughs> Dressed up for nothing. nothing. <laughs> well, I mean, this 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 movie guy, he he talked about a concierge, and and you know, frankly, there's nothing. I'm Let's sure head to it communications. doesn't signify anything. We should go and find... Yeah. You can see there is... On like one corner of the room, there is a security camera that's just watched you. As there was a security camera when you entered, and the vac seats were there. Wendy waves at it. Is it moving with us, or is it just stationary? Well, where are you moving to? Uh, well... <clears throat> I take it Zam has a copy of the map. Yes, you all got like um, the the sort of schematic sort of sent to you and stuff. So service ladder to cryopod. When you go to the, those doors are shut. Yeah, and they all need key cards to open. Well, let's just try. Uh, lucky. Why don't we... What was the number? There is, there is, there is, <laughs> there is, there is the universal key code. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll make it a thing. There, there is no, there is no keypad. These are yeah. sort of screens that you scan a card. Okay. And all of um, the, all of the crew, you can see on your maps. There is, and I'm, I'm just gonna see if I can switch over to this so the audience can see. So <clears throat> you can see where the y- yellow. Um, sort of doors are on your maps Mm -hmm. those are the crew access so only the crew can access those and there are there are red sections that only the vips can access everything else if it's grayed out that is just standard come and go everyone can come in but you wouldn't looking at the and zam would go up to one of the doors and he would see that this he would see that the it does need a card you you know a specific type of card so probably um now it wouldn't be a swipe I think it would be one that you place on. But okay. you do you do need key cards. But there is a staircase heading upstairs as well. Um, but while you're, while you're looking at this, check. no one else has arrived to, to 
greet you. Can I go back and check the vac suit storage to see whether any of the vac their vac suits have got key cards in them? You can. And when you turn to exit that door, it's locked behind you. What the hell is this? Well, I think we've got a new ship. <laughs> yeah. Did it us? I don't like how quiet it is. Let's, uh, let's head upstairs. Blaze, you go first. I don't fancy climbing that stupid, fancy, schmancy staircase. Well, then you stay here. <laughs> At one point, follow me. So Blaze, Blaze is leading the way. Oh, dear yeah, God. I've got a hand handler. Um, you got you got your what your, your hand welder. hand welder? Oh God, yeah. I forgot. You also brought a revolver with you, so I just had to double check. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's concealed. Sealed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, quickly though, Wendy. Um, I don't know if we clarified this on last session, and it wasn't picked up on the recap. Wendy has a pistol, and it has a clip. It was on the O'Brien. Did Wendy bring it with her? Uh, Wendy did not bring it with her. Good to know. But there was a certain point on arrival where she kind of really wanted to go back and get it. Okay. Which was um, seeing the logo on the ship. Corporate logo on the Icarus. Yeah. Because that struck a chord in her in her mind and she thought Yeah. I want to go back. But but she's gone she's gone no, no, was... no, the way the way of peace. There we was need to follow the way of peace. And you know, Blaze being here and being all aggressive is making her a little bit like, No no no. I I no different yeah. path now. There was something about the logo which was a sort of um a silhouetted portrait with a halo and a sort of a very graphical wing. But there was something incorporated in it because it's an echelon vessel. There was somewhat of the echelon sort of corporate logo in it, which looks like a white upside down pyramid in three segments, the echelon logo. There's something about that logo that you don't like, you don't trust. Um... But you make it up to um, the guest accommodation deck. Um, that allow me to change my map. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you head up, um, you can hear like there are speakers and audio systems just playing, just really easygoing sort of music. You know, this is a real, it's a real chill vibe. But there, you can tell this is music and sounds that are meant to inspire relaxation. And a vacation, basically. Um, is, there, is there carpet? <laughs> there is not in this okay. section. In this section, it's still the cold, hard steel of... Well, I don't know whether it's steel. It's the future. Let, I don't know what it makes. Let, let me know if you find carpet. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 Wendy's uh, ex... Uh, work, she did work experience at the carpet warehouse, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's been interested in it ever since. <laughs> um... Yeah, so as we... um, It's been 18 months in space. I haven't scrunched my toes on a carpet oh, for oh, that long. The die hard! The die hard! <laughs> oh, God. I mean, if it was if it was a fun game, I might get you to make a comfort save to see if that de-stresses you. But, um, it's not a fun game. No, no, no it is a fun so. game. It is a fun <laughs> game. Um, okay, so you, once again, you get up, and you do see, as you're walking around um, this staircase... That, you know, it goes from birds to like the the earliest planes, and you can see like the evolution of flight as it's heading upwards and upwards. It really is quite a. I mean, Wendy, with your love for craft and and art, it's quite a thing to behold. Um, and it's massive. This staircase, absolutely enormous. I mean, all four of you can walk side by side up it. It's that kind of. We do that at one point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Blaze is Blaze is leading the way. With a hand welder, <laughs> yep, <laughs> dressed in, in military uniform. <laughs> Sorry, oh, the fan art, the fan art to die for. Um, so once you get up to this, you do see, you hear all these sounds, 
and it is a wide open space and you can see there are more sort of vid screens showing all kinds of different locales and and scenes where would you like to go and there's no one about absolutely no one here ah uh, is it all clear clear from what i can see um where are you i mean it's quite a from, from where you yes you, there's nothing there's nothing there that you can see right now in this corridor. Do a quick, it's all clear, clear. Let's do a quick lap of the deck. See if we can hear anything. And if not, we'll go up. So you can see the two lifts. There is, um, and it is a VIP lift, um, which once again has has a. All of these systems have keycard systems. This one seems to have a different kind of, and even the keycard sort of scanning thing is in bla It's very blinged up. The VIP one. Um, the crew one just looks like a standard mechanical scanner um, but both there is a crew lift and a VIP lift um, that are currently you, you notice oh, by the crew lift there's there's a red light sort of flashing at the top of it when you, when you go by it but there are several rooms on this so where would what are the players doing over to you oh, explore. Yeah, I'm, Wendy I wants think... to get the job done but Lizzie so wants to explore <laughs> this I think I'm going to go into the bar, see if there's like a bartender or anybody working there. <laughs> okay, you um, you head towards a so, which is just to the, I, I don't know on our on our maps we if we say north south you're heading to the west towards the bar. Um, yeah. Um, and you get in, and this is certainly when you walk in here, Zam's walking in that direction. And he does see sort of bar and restaurant. There is a sign that says bar and restaurant above these double doors. Um, what is everyone else doing? Going with. Yeah, you're let's sticking together. Stick together. Yeah. Um, and Zam walks in. As soon as you walk in, you hear the sounds of violin music. <laughs> <laughs> you know all of <laughs> all of that, and this has carpet. <laughs> Imagine if you will. I'm trying to think that the lighting and everything in this room. There, is, there are sort of dining tables to your right. There's lots, lots of gorgeous, very sort of chilled out a lounge area to the left, like leather sofas, some furniture that looks very 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 old like antique leather furniture but all of it looks super comfortable like you could just sit in and just melt into the chair um, and you can see a large bar in front of you the lighting of it then the sort of feel um, <laughs> it is not this so I don't don't get any alarm bells but you know when Jack Torrance walk in the in Stanley Kubrick's <laughs> The Shining I knew there was going to be a Shining walks in, reference walks I into that bar, bar be the shining yeah, yeah. you know when he walks into that bar yeah. and it's got that sort of glow about it it's, it's yeah. kind of like at all. okay yeah yeah okay is the barman named Lloyd <laughs> <laughs> tell me more about this carpet <laughs> <laughs> I have a strange symmetrical yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I should have really thought about that. That should be um, it's uh, Kubrick carpet. Yeah, <laughs> I would imagine that a lot of things on this ship, and certainly there, there are there would be symbols on this carpet, but they're all stitched to look like some kind of flight and wings, and there's lots of things going on. It's very, it's very opulent in its own kind of way. Wendy is going to take her boots off and sit on something, sit quite on the edge of something, not get too comfy, but just. Okay. To Which the left place. in the lounge area, or the right in the in the dining hall. Uh, in the lounge. Okay. So I take it we can see that this room is completely empty. Then this room. Assuming there are no people, <laughs> like customers. There are no people in this room. So what there, is in this room? There are you. You can see in certain places there are tables, and you can see some half drunk glasses of wine on the left hand side there's some cups of coffee like this none of it's really been clear, cleared away but you do see empties some not so empty is is whatever's remaining still warm if it's coffee do you go over to one of the sort of yeah coffee cups it's it's cold stone 
cold. There's a coffee cup that is just... It's like cold water. It's that cold. Um, another aspect to this room is when you're looking at it, when you look up, it has a sort of vid screen that takes up the entirety of the ceiling that is showing sort of a... As it, as it stands, it's, it's a sort of a reddish autumnal evening with clouds. It's, it's quite stunning, everything yeah, about it. But it's taking up the entirety of this particular ceiling. Um, is there any like leftover food? When you do, you walk to the wards of the, di- the dining. Yeah, hall? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. Look and you can the see like uh, there are lots of tables. I mean, it's, this isn't huge. This isn't. We're not talking thousands of tables. Um, this is a big vessel, but it's also not meant for thousands of passengers. This is a vessel. Um, and Doc, you saw the manifest that it's not. We're not talking hundreds of people. This is. It's high class, and everyone's got plenty of space, but it's meant for the top level people. Um, you do see some plates with half eaten food some of it's hardly been touched it is rotting it is all inedible completely inedible um, some of the some of the some of the drinks of there's a couple of glass that have been sort of knocked over um, as you head in that how far are you going Zam Oh, not too far. Just just to get a, a good look at what's. Oh, we've walked onto the fucking Mary Celeste. Please just give me the heebie jeebies. <laughs> Which is even funnier because Gav's got a slight delay in his audio at the moment, and that just extended that heebie jeebies. <laughs> it's just, it's just amazing. Um, as soon as as soon as Blaze says heebie jeebies, uh, Zan's going to go. Oh, I never listened to that classical pop music. <laughs> <laughs> and um so Buddy, I'm just try- trying to stay alive. <laughs> <laughs> so Azam, you so on a, you see that on a couple of the tables closest to you. Hmm. Um are you heading to the bar? Where where, are, where is everyone looking? Where is everyone going? I just need to know where everyone's sort of Doc, yeah, what are you so doing? As Zam's, Cause, cause... As Zam's gone in, I figure he's gone right to just check the dining hall, just to, just to see if there's any signs of this is this disappearance has happened recently. But obviously not now. If there's mm. rotting food, and... mm. there is something else that catches your eye, Zam. Mm-hmm. And uh, you look to the as you're looking at some of the tables and some of the food, and it's. It smells rough. Mm. Some of it's like, oh. Um, when you look to the right, you see the sign that says restrooms. And there is another uh, double doors leading to the, the galley and the kitchens. Something catches your eye on the floor by there. It's a small... By the a, galley? Yeah, by the galley. In front of the, in front of the galley doors... The double doors to the galley, yeah? The double doors to the galley. It is, a, it is a small... There's a little card on the floor. And near it, there is a bit of a blood trail leading into the galley. Hey, guys, I found a key card. You find a key card. Does uh, anybody want to go get it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because he can see it. He can see a card on the floor at the moment. Uh, hey, Blaze! <laughs> uh, I go. I go get you, Blaze. You um, two things you notice immediately when you pick up this key card, and you you stop for a moment when you when you back, sort of crouch down to pick it up. It's a key card that's on a bit of a, a sort of a chain, like a lanyard sort of thing, and it has security written on it. With the word Denny, the name Denny underneath it, and in the center of these cards is a sort of like a like a square microchip thing that you can, you know would be that's the bit you scan onto the doors to open parts of the ship. But the other thing you notice, and you would probably Blaze would be the one that might recognise this, is the blood trail that's leading into the galley doors is like someone being dragged in. It's not loads of it. There's not loads of it, but there's. It's definitely smeared in a certain way. 
Can I get your professional opinion? It's definitely oh, blood. <laughs> That's what I have to have to. <laughs> We have to fucking go in there, aren't we? Well, if somebody's hurt, you'll probably need to give them um, uh, some medical collateral. Uh, I'll go first. Yes, you fucking will. So, what's happening out? Uh, like, Blaze and Doc have stopped near the doors of the galley where you see this. And Zam is currently just stood there. He watched them approach and just passed him. I've currently got Wendy in my head just sat on one of the comfy ch- <laughs> chairs oh, Wendy. on the other Wendy side. Wendy's actually moved now, so she's lying on the floor. <laughs> on the carpet in the lounge just in um, shavasana in corpse pose just flat on her back just eyes closed just having the most relaxing moment she's yeah. had for a year and a half there's a, there's a moment before you close your eyes Wendy you look at the sky and you haven't seen the sky in a sky like that in months this is an earthen sky this is not the strange temperate climate from different planets this is earth uh, I call. I call back, just as, as we're going. Wendy, watch our six. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to suggest and go Wendy in. stays here in case we find any octopi or squid or anything else that might have tentacles. She doesn't do well in those situations. What I'm going like, to so blissed out. So blissed out. <laughs> Wendy doesn't even respond to, to those words being okay. said. Okay. Sam's going to back up to the bar. I will say, I will say, I should have done this straight yeah. away. I was too caught okay. up in the scene. Don't, don't worry, it's not you, Zam. Yeah. Uh, Blaze and Doc. Uh, Blaze, you can give me a fear save. I think you're both going to give me fear saves, actually. I think. I don't think I am, not with my fear score. 46. That's so a success? fail. fail. It's a fail. It's a fail. 42, also a fail. Okay. Is there something on... Um... Oh, no, it's when, a, it's when a marine panics, isn't it? That everyone... Yeah. Yeah. So both get a point of stress there. Does, um, does Wendy get to do a comfort save, considering she seems so blissful? Oh, thank you. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this isn't strictly. I'm going to work my way around all of the. I'm going to go to the spa next. Yeah. I explore up. If, uh... I have a feeling we've lucked out. We're walking into this room, and all we can see is a trail of blood. I imagine if we go into the spa, it's going to be you know full yeah, on entrails and stuff. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to lie on the floor for the next six weeks. That's it. <laughs> Half a body just bobbing now, in the water or something uh, like that. Wendy. Hello. You can give me a comfort save. You can give it... It's a straight roll. And you have to beat a 50. Do you want to do it? Because if you fail, you'll get another point of stress. I like the odds. (laughs) Never tell me the odds. I have lovely purple crystals. Oh, purple crystals. Can I bring in the purple crystals? (sighs) <laughs> doesn't want to stay on the table. Whew, that is a 36. 36. I am so relaxed. <laughs> so relaxed. I'm a very generous warden. So relaxed. Divide that by three and that's how many stress you lose. Divide it by ten? Ten. Three. Yeah. <laughs> so she just lost 12 it, stress. It, it, would be, it would be three. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> would it be three or four? I've got to make a sanity save now. Um, it would be... Um, yeah, divided by ten... It would be 3.6, so we'll say 3. We'll round down. We'll round down because I'm being generous. Ooh, that's <laughs> not generous. Me, that's not generous. Shut up, Zab. It worries me when Jim starts to have an argument with his character. Fighting <laughs> <laughs> oh. to come out. No. <laughs> okay. Um, so... As Zam backs away, and Wendy is 
You get your comfort save, but you're broken out of it. Your eyes just slowly open up, looking at the sky once again as you hear Blaze Kelvin call you over. I, I probably would say as well that as Zam is backing away, he's probably got his hand on the nail gun and is just getting that ready just in case. Okay. We've been here before. <laughs> <laughs> so, how are you heading into this kitchen? Through these double uh, doors? Doc just puts a hand on Blaze's shoulder. One second. Pulls out the hip flask, has a swig, offers it to Blaze. <laughs> No, no, just take a dibble. <laughs> how, how much did you drink? How much did you drink, Blaze, just then? Uh, uh, like some gulps. So, mm. have you have you almost a third of that? As if it's a small head flask, you reckon you downed a third of it? Uh, yeah, probably. Yeah. Doc, you feel this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> never offering it to him again. <laughs> Okay, so how are you heading in? (laughs) (laughs) Silently. Okay. uh, I imagine Doc's Doc's, Doc's quite behind me. Yeah, still. I've got my. I've got my Trank gun out now as well. Okay. As you see, the other two of you, you can see these guys head in. And you see this kitchen, and it is a large kitchen when you walk through these double doors. And you, you know, this place, this is top of the range stuff everywhere. There's storage units with like loads of, you see lots of long, sort of long life storage units as well, keeping, you would imagine, some really nice food in there. Oh, good, the sinister music's here. <laughs> <laughs> you followed a blood trail, PJ. You followed a blood trail. What did you expect? I followed a blood trail. Chef could have just cut his finger, you know. Yeah. The chef could have cut the his ketchup. finger. Yeah. And that's. <laughs> that would have been a lot of blood coming from the chef's finger. Might have a really big finger. <laughs> <laughs> it's a stirring finger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. So yeah, there are there are huge units. There is like a cutting board with like there are some half chopped onions and and a knife. Is uh, there? Is there? Is, can I pick up pick up the biggest knife? The biggest knife. Well, as you I... as you head towards, are, are you follow? Are, are you following the line of sight of that blood as well? Yeah. Yes. I mean, obviously doing scans of the room, but mostly yeah, yeah, following the following the trail. As well as the stuff that's sort of scattered around, you can see like there are some pots and pans on the floor, and like it seems like there was some sort of scuffle. There was something that happened here, um, and just around the corner, you're beginning to you you clock it first as your eyes just turn turn a bit of a corner, and you see there's there's a body lying on the floor in sort of. Pale and dark greys, sort of tactical vest. Um, but from the looks of it, you know exactly that didn't help them because their neck was hacked into, and it is their head is just hanging off. And you can see the bone, and there's blood everywhere. Um, there Anything is... you think, you grim duck? <laughs> I'm going to say it's a little beyond my scope at this point. And the, the, it's sort of slumped down on the, on the f- floor and its left arm has been hacked off at, the, at sort of like at the wrist. You can see not too far from that another trail of blood. You can see that that hand is grasping a pistol. There was a pistol in an amputated hand on the floor. And there is something else there. There is a large refrigeration unit against the wall. Not too far from it, I would say. Maybe about ten feet or so. It's about five feet from that pistol on the floor. And there is a figure 
it looks like it's ha it's got his arm trapped in the re refrigeration door. It too is sort of slumped on the ground somewhat, sort of head down. And you can see from where the the, the fridge is sort of partially crushed. I mean, this is an industrial sort of like fridge. As it's crushed the arm, you can see lots of creamy, pale liquid has been pouring from the wound. And it's just got his head down like that. What do you do? Oh, please, I want that pistol. Could you go and get it for me, please? I'd be ever so grateful. <laughs> I mean, are you trained to use a piece of piss luck? I don't think he is. <laughs> I mean, why not? <laughs> I'll tell you what, if you stick with the, the tranquilizers, I'll go get the pistol still. I've done that knife though, right? Right. <laughs> yeah, you you slowly, as you sort of, yeah, sort of, you got the gun, your, um, it's a hand welder, isn't it? So you need to yeah. be, you need to be right up close to anything to do anything with a hand welder. It's not yeah. a pistol. It's not a nail gun even. But you can slowly just very slowly. It's a it's a kitchen knife. This one. Yeah. Okay. Um. As you step close, so what are you doing? Are you heading further? Yeah, ten, 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 tenly approach the 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 hand holding the pistol. Okay. What are the what are the other two doing? Where are Lizzie, uh, Wendy, and, and Zam? Uh, Sam's going to be now at the bar, looking for anything that looks like it hasn't deteriorated that he can drink. <laughs> you step over to the bar, Zam, and you see when you get to the bar, it is a long, opulent bar that looks like it's the bar itself almost looks like looks like brass and oak. You know, lots of taps and there's, li you know, liquor bottles. A lot of this is... When you look at the booze in the, this place, you can't afford... You could never afford stuff like this on your wages. It's that kind of stuff. And there is... Behind the bar, sat on a seat, there is another figure just stood there with their eyes closed. Oh, it was sat, sat down on a small chair just with their eyes closed. And they, they look like they're wearing a sort of a bartender's sort of uniform in sort of deep crushed sort of red reddish velvets white shirt it's just slicked back sort of hair very sort of palish skin it is Lloyd <laughs> it's just <laughs> sat there. like obviously dead or it's not obvious at the moment it's just just sat there so is there a, is there a glass of something liquidy on the bar there's no real glasses with anything on the bar, but there are a couple within reach, just behind. You could okay, you could help gonna... you could help yourself to something if you want to get a glass. Or... No, I'm just going to pick something up and throw it at the body just to see whether it wakes them up. <laughs> there's a small oh, bowl. Fuck. We'll say. Well, there's a small bowl with some nuts. Yeah. There's okay. Some... So, so what are you doing? Gonna. I'm going to throw some nuts at this thing. Good, this good. I, I, I gave, I gave him the opportunity to throw in the bowl and I was just checking to see whether he was going to take it. No, I mean, just no. some nuts. This person might be allergic to nuts. <laughs> well, we'll soon find out. Yeah. We might need you, Doc. Trigger warning <laughs> for anyone with any nut allergies, by the way. We, sorry sorry about this. Um, so, Zam starts throwing nuts. He's gonna, at... Yeah, he's going to like grab some nuts. He's going to throw them and he's just going to go, Wendy... <laughs> what is Wendy doing? Uh, Wendy is bringing herself back from being beautifully relaxed and centred, hearing kind of Zam's cut through any Zen voice. <laughs> and she's going to just kind of wander over. She's got her boots sort of tied to each other and over one shoulder. Mm. Is she barefoot or does she have. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. 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 Um, and she's just going to suffer. So that's how the situation just kind of Zam and just kind of go. Shots? Uh, there may be shots fired if this person wakes up. 
Um, Wendy will reach the over the bar. You, get when, Wendy's going to reach over the bar. Reach over the bar to get a couple of shot glasses and a bottle yeah. of whatever. As Wendy's reaching over the oh, bar, geez. and Zam, you see this. You notice that as she's went looking over, you just sort of look to either side, and you can see that there is a there's some small sort of metallic discs on either side. It's almost like a not a security light, you know, like a like a trip. So if you you're going to get me with the security system, <laughs> as you put your hand over the bar. Zam, you see the figure on the chair just go and look straight at you both. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, oh. as Blaze is as Blaze is crouched down, about to reach this pistol, Doc, you're stood how far away? The about. Not that far, maybe five, five, ten feet. feet back. Yeah, yeah, ten feet. So you can see like this this enormous slab from where earlier Blaze took the the kitchen knife, and there's other utensils like a meat hammer and all these kind of like things. But towards the corner, this one, there's a cleaver, a cleaver that has a lot of blood on it. And you see, as Blaze is reaching down towards the pistol, the figure, with its arm trapped in the fridge, lifts its head. And we'll pick that up after the break. <laughs> You're a prick, Vince. We're going to have a break for five minutes. As the ship, as the ship is coming to life, um, yes. Join us back in five minutes to see what on earth is going to happen in this situation between the separated party. See ya. Hey everybody, Vince here, game warden and general mischief maker. When it comes to the safe space show, just wanted to say we hope you're enjoying the show so far, and if you want to find out more about the other podcasts and general news that we have on the, this network, then why don't you follow us on social media. On Twitter, we're at LawbreakerPod, and you can follow us on Instagram at LawbreakerRadio. Just to be clear, that's L-O-R-E, Breaker Radio. But follow us there. We'll be sure to follow back and interact with the community and let you know a bit more about what's upcoming on the Lawbreaker Radio network. But uh, I think without further ado, enough of me. Let's get back to the show. And welcome back. So, when we left, two of our crew were in the kitchen at a murder scene. And an, an android that was trapped in a kitchen had just woken up. It was trapped in a fridge. Whereas their friends, I think they're friends, are out at the, bu- they're at the bar. Yeah, co- colleagues. They're at the bar. They're at the bar. And uh, that is where we'll start. This is it. This is interesting because there's like almost two scenes, two <laughs> things going on. So as this figure opens its eyes and looks directly at both of you, Wendy, you, you, do you pause as you're sort of leaning over to grab a shot glass as it just looks at you? No. I keep going. Two shot glasses, one random bottle. One random bottle. Am I safe to say the attention the attention might be focused on Zam who's throwing peanuts at it? (laughs) As it opens its eyes, a peanut falls off it, bounces off its head. And as Lizzie's uh, as Wendy is just picking up a bottle as well that was just beneath, um, the figure slowly sort of stands up and you can see now that the name badge on it says Klaus and it sort of steps up to you and says hello there what can I get for you this evening hey Klaus uh, we just thought it was happy hour and it would be okay just to you know do our thing 
every hour is happy hour on the Icarus. Are you well, having a good evening? Wonderful. We're having a lovely evening. Thank you. Are you? Always. And you see Klaus just begins moving around the bar and just sort of cleaning up a little bit and starts moving glasses around. What's um, the speciality of this of your particular bar, Klaus? I am programmed to make whatever cocktail or drink you would like. Have Ooh. you uh, got any of the uh, Shadow de Nerf 47? And it, it pauses for a moment and just stares at you there. I'm sorry, we do not currently have that. But yeah. would you like to look at the, the wine list? Yeah, that would be great, yeah. Certainly. Would you like to look at the wine list? No, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I see. I see you're enjoying the the peanuts. Would you Would you like a top up? Yeah, certainly. And picks up the bowl that isn't really that empty to begin with. Yeah, and just heads over and starts like pouring. There's like a sort of glass jar with like sort of nuts and stuff, and starts pouring more in. And he's just pouring these nuts. Just keeps going. Okay. So the nuts begin to. Sort of... Has that bought Wendy enough time to? Uh, <laughs> to Wendy, Wendy, could, Wendy, Wendy, yeah, Wendy could be yeah. half cut right now. Yeah. <laughs> so Wendy is pouring shots as fast as she can and just handing one, at, you know, one to yeah. Sam for each one that she is like. Yeah. As long as we can do this without anybody asking for a credit card. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you are actually <laughs> getting your your drinking hard liquor right yes. now. Yes. We are drinking hard liquor. Apologies to those watching who... who uh, We're what, drinking hard liquor. Yeah, I, Sam's going to knock one back, yep. Okay. I'm going to make a note of how many drinks you have. <laughs> I didn't think this would be... <laughs> I feel so fucking tense. I don't... <laughs> Right, okay. We're, we're good friends. We're friends now with Klaus. Klaus is yeah. getting peanuts yeah. and we are helping him do inventory. You've got one of these. <laughs> okay, so, and then eventually Klaus stops pouring the nuts and turns back and drops them onto you. By that time, when he's had a chance to, if you wanted to put two shots away, you could have had put two shots away. Likewise, Zan. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Would you like a drink to go with this? What do you uh, suggest, Klaus? Well, we have many ales from all through the sectors. There are lagers, if you like stouts. Perhaps, would you like to see the wine list? Uh, just uh, pick something for me, Klaus. I trust you. Certainly. We also cater for soft drinks if you would prefer. You must be consumed so that you can become. What would you like to drink? Uh, I... Do you have any more of this? Yeah, some more of that. <laughs> you hold up the, the bottle of liquor. The bottle of whatever it is. Galliano. Space Galliano, I believe it might be. <laughs> And uh, all the young people going, what's Galliano? Do you, do you um, <laughs> look in the show notes? Us, no, um, <laughs> do you do you hold it out to Klaus, or are you just showing it? Are you just sort of, I'm you, showing it, yeah. showing it. Yeah, yeah. I will just look at our inventory, see what we have. Thank you, Klaus. You're welcome. You're a, you're a good guy, Klaus. And you're the best, sir. Oh, you are, okay. Klaus. How are you enjoying your stay? All the better for seeing you, Klaus. Far too kind, sir. Would you like some nuts? Ah, uh, no, we're good for nuts, thanks. Just see if you can find the bottle for us, Klaus. Thank you. I'll do so now. Meanwhile, in the kitchen... <laughs> I feel like I've left the fucking Chuckle Brothers in a murder mansion. 
while this happened, <laughs> actually, <laughs> make a sanity save, both of you. Oh, gee. Oh, right, okay. Sanity. Mm-hmm. Unless, unless what has happened has started to scare you. Um, no, mm -hmm. not so far. Okay. Mm, funny programming thing so mm. far. Mm. Oh, yes. Zam rolled a 31. Okay. And Sanity is 35. Yes. Mm. It's finally turning Dad's around. Having a great time. Who Ooh, knew hard liquor would be, the, uh, <laughs> would be the cause? Um, <laughs> Wendy rolled a 68 against a 20, so oh. <laughs> not so much. Um, you were getting chilled out, Wendy, but there's something about this is like being unnerving. It's, it's, it's a great when, idea, Wendy. This it's when Klaus great. said when, it's when Klaus said that Zam was the best. It's like, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody has ever said that before. Yeah. Yeah. Who'd have thought I'd find my people here? <laughs> <laughs> Although it kind of reminds me of my wedding reception, <laughs> and and we cut and we cut from that. We cut. <laughs> I need we, a moment. That happened. That was canon, by the way. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we had the shadow to them. There nobody then there then either. <laughs> it cuts Wendy. That cuts hard. <laughs> Most of her family didn't turn up. They didn't approve. <laughs> Okay. We power through. Okay. <laughs> Can we just stay with them for a minute? It's like, yeah, I need a moment. <laughs> Meanwhile, exams having a breakthrough. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, <laughs> can Blaze and Doctor Forrest. Give me a fear save. Have I have I noticed the uh, android awaken? We'll find out in yeah, a second. I've shouted. Oh, okay. We'll find out in a second because this thing is just. That is a forty and a fail. Okay, that is not. You do not. You do not get stressed for this. You don't. Oh, okay. Yeah, don't get stressed for that. I'm not gonna. This is almost an initi initiative roll sort of thing. Oh, four. So you. So you succeeded. Oh, um, definitely. With a yeah, four. With a four. Oh. Um, which means that you have time to react. So I would say, yes, you notice as you're getting there, this thing wakes up and you have time to react before we're going into sort of the initiative sort of order, the actions. So you have you have an action, basically. You have time to do something when you see this thing open it, lift its head up and look at you. What do you do, Blaze? No! <laughs> As the gun is right there, you haven't got the gun yet. And the gun is in a hand. <laughs> how far away is the... From where I am? Where? How far away is the android? It's uh, probably five feet distance from you. It's, with it, it's nearby. In terms of... In terms of... Uh, the action economy and distance when it comes to encounters and things like that. This thing... Is nearby, which means it can get to you, but it's not close that it can touch you yet. But if you're gonna okay. get that gun, you might move into it, might depending on how the next round goes. But it's trapped, but it can reach the gun from where it is. Okay, I rush and grab the gun. Okay, okay, so you. I, so you will have time to rush, pick up the gun, which is in a hand, and the hand. Uh, pick, pick up the hand. I pick, pick up, up the hand and, 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 the, <laughs> and the gun, and you can. What do you want to do then? This, you have one more chance to do something. Uh, can I take the hand off and? Here you go, duck. And now, <laughs> now, if you choose to do that, you will stay where you are, trying to get the hand off this gun. Yeah. Just use the hand and pull the trigger <laughs> finger. I've got stubby fingers. It won't. <laughs> it won't be able to manipulate it. Um, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I try and, I try and wrench the hand. The hand make, a, make a strength check. Can I apply athletics? Yes. 
Ja. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, that's 16. Yes. Yes, 16. I, I pass. You break fingers. This thing <laughs> is the rigor mortis. And when you... I mean, this body has been dead for a while. Um, but this this kitchen's quite chilled, so it's sort of it's mm. kept it a little bit fresher. Look at that's quite a grip. Um, but you have to break fingers in order to get it free. So you have the you have the pistol on this round, and you, you discard the hand. Now, I'd like everyone to make a um, well. Only these two, because the others are out having shots. Uh, Blaze and Doc Forest make a speed check. This is initiative, so this is not a. Um, this is not. You don't get stressed for this. This is just to see if you go before or after the creature. Can I also add athletics to this? <laughs> if it's a speed check. Yeah. Yeah. Why not? There's no point in adding anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you. I'm having one of those nights. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! You're having a Zam oh. night. Sorry, Zam. Too rolled, soon. I I just rolled a ninety-nine. Oh no! Did it have a flake? Fuck off! <laughs> <laughs> the warden will remember that. <laughs> uh, I rolled a forty-five, and my thing would have been forty-four. Oh, it failed! So the creature goes first, or the creature, the, the android goes first. And what happens? You see this as it looks up. It's just a, and its eyes widen. He just goes, no more voices, no more voices, I am me, I am me! And it starts violently wrenching its arm. And it starts like just the the creamy, pale android blood. I don't know how to say android blood without it sounding a little bit weird. So <laughs> as it's just, just spurting out as it's wrenching its arm free. And like that, it rips its arm free of the fridge and start begins tumbling towards you that's its turn and it is it is close to you now it is it's sort of as it wrenches free its arm still trapped within this fridge its body sort of tumbles towards you blaze now blaze you you go first on this initiative because you got the lower roll what would you like to do um is it possible to get my knife back out? The kitchen knife. Mm. You've got a pistol in your hand as well, don't forget. I know, but let's not. <laughs> <laughs> you got the kitchen knife. Okay. you got, um, the ki- you got the kitchen knife. Kitchen knife, and I'm going to go for its cranium. Or central <laughs> processing unit. <laughs> <laughs> He's calling his shot. I don't know if you can do that. Um, okay, make a combat roll. Okay, I also have expert skills in hand-to-hand combat. Yes. Which is a plus 15 Mm -hmm. to my combat, which makes it a... Let me do maths. 54 to roll under. Yeah, okay. Woo! I rolled a 10. (laughs) Boy! Um... As you, like these dice. you jam, as this thing sort of stumbles forward, you you see the top of its head, right? And you can see that this, this is an android. It's it's not a completely sleek android. It's slightly bulkier, this fella. But you see, you immediately take, you've got the gun in one hand, and you just get the kitchen knife and jam it into the top of this thing's head. Roll me uh, a d10 damage, please. Three. As you hear the damn, you hear the cheap. crunch of and it's it's not like it's not like stabbing something with flesh or, or any sort of alien creature this hits resistance and it, you hear your there's more blood sort of spurts out um you've got one other action you, you well you can move you get you get like sort of two when it comes to encounters you get sort of like two things you can do is it is it like an action and a movement, or can I do like two I, actions? I believe, I believe it is an action and a movement. Yes, yes, turn order. 
Oh yes, yes. Um, so you can do, you can basically move and then do one thing. So you basically, as it says in the book, think of the situation like a real life scenario. Think about what you would do in these circumstances. Describe it. Um, if you wouldn't be able to accomplish everything you want to do in one round, and one round is about sort of like a ten sec, five to ten seconds. So I will let you know if you can't do this particular thing because it will take up too much time because you did, you spotted it and then bang. So that's almost half the time taken. Um, yeah. So you could like, you know, move or like get to a certain spot or you could f- try and grab something else. I can't attack it again. I would say if you with the knife. No, with my foot. <laughs> I wanted to see if I could like. <laughs> you want to push it away? Um, I'll allow you yeah, to. I want to King, King Le- Le- Leonidas it into a In, back into the fridge. I'll allow. I'll yeah. allow that. I'll allow that because that would be more. Ooh. Make a combat check. Uh, also, hand uh, hand yeah. hand combat. Yeah. Plus yeah. thirty. That's a success. So I do it. Yep. Success. So um, I would say you you kick this thing and it, it sort of like it sort of stumbles back and it, you kick it in the chest. And as it looks up, you can you can see that it was quite a big kitchen knife. You can see the bottom of it sort of poking out at the top of its mouth as you kick this thing really hard and it sort of stumbles back. Um, it will. This will do. I'd say a, a, roll a d10, half it, and that's how much damage you'll do to this. Are you rounding down? Yeah. Two. Two. Um, I'm rounding down, but I'll also be rounding down for me, if anything. <laughs> if I actually manage to hit you, which I normally don't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. You better get over here. Um, but Blaze is still with it. He's taken this thing on, and he's knocked it back <laughs> into the fridge. Um, dents the fridge a little bit, which is a hell of a kick. Doc, what are you doing? Do I know this model of Android? Like, is it the same model as Dick? No. You know immediately this is high-grade stuff. So I wouldn't know where the off switch is? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Forrest spent a lot of his time being a scientist, human biology saving lives, pushing forward medical science. He didn't take up figuring out how androids worked, so no. Wasted my life. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to save someone later, Doc, so don't say that just yet. I, uh, I, I desperately just look around for the nearest weapon and I just grab whatever is closest to me and chuck it at the android. <laughs> you're chucking it? Okay, you're just going to do that. So that would be, be both. So you can move, you can launch... And the nearest thing to that android is the cleaver. Nearest thing to me, though. That if you were gonna, if you were gonna jump, well, yeah, you would jump forward. I would say the. You get a choice. There's a meat hammer, which is closer to you. It's not a huge meat hammer. This isn't Mjolnir. They're quite hefty, though, aren't They're they? They're quite the hefty, ones? and there's the cleaver that's just a little bit closer. The android has been kicked back, so it's not. It's not. It's got to do something to get that. I will go for the cleaver then. Okay, so, so you can go for the cleaver. Are you chucking chuck it? it? Are chucking yeah. this thing? Okay, make a combat roll. Ah, 34. Three too many. It, as this thing tumbles back, the dot gets very close and it just sort of, it sort of hits the metallic wall and falls down next to this thing. I say that just the handle goes dunk and bounces off. Yeah, instead. it'll be like, yeah, it just like <laughs> boom. Yeah, that's totally it. It hits. It doesn't hit the wall. It hits its head as it sort of stumbles back and lands on the floor next to this thing. Do I get a point of stress for that? Sorry, I can't remember. Yes, you would get a point of stress for that. Um, okay, everyone, make a um, speed check. We'll do one more round and then we'll cut back out to the bar. Were well, they having a less stressful time, possibly? Depends if he's found that bottle yet. What did you get, Doc? One. <laughs> you got one. <laughs> I got a one. Yes. So okay. So ninety-nine to one. <laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> uh, add them together, and what have you got? No, uh, <laughs> Blaze. What did you get? Uh, Forty-one. But that's that's a. Uh... Success. That's a success. So that's a success. So I add my athletics. Yeah. 
Doc goes first, then Blaze. So Doc, after seeing this, and this I thing's like meat hammer. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> just throwing kitchen utensils. Do it. I'm out of out of my depth. I don't know what I'm yeah. doing. Uh, thirty-one, which is my combat score. Meets it, beats it. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. So you hit. This thing hits it. Roll a d10. And meat hammer. And uh, half it. Half it. <laughs> Well, I rolled a two, so that's a one. So, yeah, so he hit it, but he's not he's not as strong as Blaze. So like after after the, the cleaver hit it on the handle, it goes bang. Blaze are out of weapons, <laughs> and it leaves a small dent in its forehead as it's going. Um, Doc, go get the others. <laughs> um, I'll hold it off. And Blaze, what are you doing? Uh. Open fire. Ooh. With the pistol. Okay. Yeah. Make a um make a combat check, please. Now what have you got that you can add to this? Um military training. Yeah, I'll allow that. Uh which is a plus ten, so forty nine. Okay. To roll under. It's been a while since I've used a pistol. Uh, <laughs> 79. 79. Fail. Fail, so you get <laughs> you get a point stress of stress. Up. Importantly, though, it wasn't a critical fail. As you uh, you fire off a shot and it misses. Sort of... Sort of it just the... With the dog hitting you with the hammer sort of throws you off a little bit. Um, and what would you like to do? You got you got one more bit of action economy. Uh, the 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 android doesn't look like it's slowing down. No, or it's sort of no. Yeah, it's sort of. I mean, it's looking really badly hurt right now. But now I'm gonna I'm gonna take another pop at it if I if I may, Vince. Take another pop. Yeah. Because you're not moving, you're just literally firing, so that would be... Yeah. Only they'll hear the gunshots outside. They will hear the gunshots outside. <laughs> yep. And they'll hear me keep missing. 73. <laughs> 73. <laughs> 73. Once again, it's sort of, it's, it's sort of moving erratically. And, uh... God damn it! Guns pulling to the left! <laughs> Lights are all woofy! Um, and it... <laughs> <laughs> so you so you miss and he's still there with it it's the creature's turn as it just sort of as the shots go wide and it just looks up and it grabs hold of the blade and slowly pulls it out of its head and you can just see like you can you can hear the sound of metal against metal as this thing and you even see part of its mouth sort of invert oh. inwards as it's pulling in as it goes and it pulls out the, the blade. I want to Cut. pull my ripcord, man. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, PJ. I'll, I'll, I'll dial back in it. I'll dial back in it. Uh, <laughs> as, as it, as it sort of... <laughs> Too much Android violence. I would imagine, it, as it holds the blade, you know that wonderful scene in Skyfall when he takes out his <laughs> mouthpiece mm-hmm. and there's like a pocket missing. There, there's something, Something's gone in the middle of this Android's head and it's all... And it's like... Oh, my voice is... No more voices. And it, I shouldn't have done that. I missed some voice up. And then it begins to move towards you. <laughs> hey, everyone, make a speed check. Oh fuck! As I almost die trying to do an Android voice, because outside, everyone. A- everyone, because outside, as the way as Klaus is just staring at you, Wendy. After saying they were going to get a bottle, they have not moved. They've just stared at you. Okay. And then you heard two gunshots. So. And I was just saying that just because Uptown Girl was your song doesn't mean you have to like Piano Man. But you know, it's, it's, I it completely was, understand. That's what we dance to. And it was so indicative of our relationship, you know, because, like, she's really rich. And I'm really poor, Wendy. I'm a poor man, you know? You're rich in spirit, Sam. And, and they never liked me. They never liked me. And then after what she did, 
I, I'm a broken man, Wendy. This stuff is really good. If you keep going, I mean, this is, I want to listen to this all night. But if you keep going, I made two gunshot sound effects and you kept talking. <laughs> what was the Mind gun? you, what did you get in your speed checks? What did everyone get? Uh, I got a 48 and I needed a 45. So, Zam, that's and there's no, nothing I can add to it, I don't think. No, no. Unless I can add 0G. You're, you're too busy re- reliving your past traumas. Yeah. So, let's add another point of stress. I rolled a one. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Wendy will probably go first. Yeah, well, she will go first. Uh, Blaze, what did you get? 56. Is that a fail? Yeah, that is a fail. Okay. Um, and Doc Forrest, what did you get? I failed on an 85. Okay. Remember, for for initiative, no one is getting stressed for this. Oh, so I don't need that point of stress. No, you don't need that point oh, of stress. Okay. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not <laughs> you counting. Can have it if you want. Though. I'm not counting it for initiatives. Might otherwise, well. that would be. I seem to be going through my uh, past traumas. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which makes sense why Zam didn't react straight away. Whereas Wendy's yeah. like. She immediately heard it. Um, now, Zan, yeah, what do you... Re- I recognise the sound of a shot missing. <laughs> 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 and I know exactly who fired it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, it's your turn, Wendy. Now, where you are at the bar, here's your, essentially here's your choices. If you wanted to head towards that shot, it would almost be an action dash. Do you know what I mean? It would be, you can get to where they are Maybe not right up to it, but you could cross that, the restaurant. Or you could stay there and have another shot. I mean, both of this, the gunshots I would recognise probably the one I think I would know. You would know, yeah. Came from the same gun? Yes. You recognise that, you recognise that gunfire. Also with Wendy's backstory. Oh no, I've got to go, I've got to go. Um, As Zam's crying. Yeah. <laughs> Zam turns just, to Klaus just, and goes, you just, see what I mean, Klaus? Wait, wait, you wait. and me, we're the same. <laughs> oh, women, the women, they always run. They always go. They, it, they're too good for people like us, Klaus. This is what okay. they do. And Wendy, oh Wendy bursts as off. I, as I'm running, can I pick something, a couple of bits off tables? Yes. What are you, what are you looking for? Wendy, uh, I am not looking. I am instinctively grabbing, um, but I think I will probably end up with like a napkin still in its napkin ring. Yeah, and maybe like a side plate. Okay, so you're not going for cutlery. No. Okay. Too obvious. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a, a plate and a napkin ring with the napkin believe. still in it. With the napkin believe. still in it. Yeah, mm. yeah. She weaves through, and as soon as you burst through, so you would get into the galley, and you would see over the other side. Um, this is what you see. You see over the other side of the kitchen, like a, a figure, its head just oozing pale blood, an arm torn off with a butcher's knife, <laughs> lunge towards Blaze Kelvin. And he misses. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's when it sort of lunges past Blaze that you see, you suddenly realise like how big this knife was that you placed in this thing and it would have hurt quite badly, you'd imagine. Um, as it sort of reaches back and it's trying to sort of say things and, and you notice one of its eyes is starting to sink in its socket and it's sort of looking at you. I am me, I am me, I am me. And uh, now it had to learn. Lun- its movement was to lun- lunge forward towards you to get into range to stab you. So that's its turn. That's its turn because you kicked it against the yeah the fridge. So yeah, yeah. So that's its turn. That's what you see. And then it is. I believe it is. Is it the doc's turn or is it? Um... I got a forty-eight. Uh, so it'd probably be Zam next. Is that right? Yeah. I got an 85, so I'm probably last. Uh, yeah. Yeah. 
And I think Blaze, you got in between that, didn't you? I, I believe. Yeah, fifty-six. Cool, cool. So Zam, what are you doing? Is um, as as you see now that this android waiter is just staring at you. Did you manage to find any more of this? Would you like some more nuts, sir? No, I don't want no more nuts. You must consume <laughs> so that you can become. I don't want to consume nothing. You know, I've had enough of your crap. You're just like all the rest of them. I thought we were kindred spirits, you know? You consume. consume. What does that even mean, anyway? Is it just... It suddenly stops and just stares at you, Zam. Is that your turn to talk to? You have just been talking to this thing, by the way. I will count that as that's part of your turn. Are you continuing to converse with this thing? Uh, I think he's going to grab the bottle and start walking off. As you hear it say something as you walk off. Yeah. Okay, so you don't make it to the galley, but you've got the bottle of booze this afternoon. So I hear him say the consume thing as I'm walking off, yeah. He doesn't say that, he says something else. Do you okay. want to make a roll to see if you hear it? Yeah. I would say... Make an... Would it be an intelligence roll? There's no sort of perception or wisdom kind of roll. And you've been drinking, so make an intelligence roll to see if you can put this together. Okay. Ooh! <laughs> so I've got 18. You heard one word. Yeah. In a very cheerful voice. Yeah. Run. <laughs> so I'm going to stop. No, he started walking. He finished his turn walking across, and then he was like, What? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, Blaze, having narrowly missed a butcher's knife connecting with you, what do you do? Um, third time's the charm. <laughs> I'm gonna shoot it again. This thing is very close to you now. So oh, disadvantage. So n- no, not with a. <laughs> you got to describe to me how you're gonna aim at this thing. Talk me how into what is close. It missed your face. And it's just reeling back. It is. You can you can, can it, touch it. <laughs> can I can I sort of jam the pistol under its chin? Am I that close? Yeah, I'd like to do that, please. Then you will get advantage on this because it's cl- it's it's close. Um, don't don't get a critical fail. <laughs> oh, I'll just go for that. Twenty nine. 29. Um, oh, hang on. Just in case I get a crit. Wait, if I get a double good. It's double good, yeah. Yeah. Just. No, we'll stick with the 29, please. Okay. <laughs> okay. As uh, you see, Blaze immediately just jams the gun underneath, close combat, and just pulls the trigger. Um, now, we've got a handy charts sort of weapons that are also in the uh, Mothership player manual, and a pistol. <clears throat> is 1d10 damage normally for a bit of fun I'm going to allow you 2d10 let me find another one <laughs> because it's so close quarters and this and where, you, where you're where you shooting this thing Tiny door. there we go Woo! 9 altogether. <laughs> I've got to roll up a wound now in Mothership whenever you have health bars and you, you empty one of those health bars you when you lose that final bit of health you roll a bit you roll a wound something bad has happened which is great in the game because it means like your character can then break an arm or you know you can do it could be minimum or it could be maximum I'm going to let the player roll this uh, it is gunshot so Roll me a d10, Gav. Seven. Does it make sense? 
It's major blood loss. <laughs> oh, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> so, oh no, and that is bleeding plus four. <clears throat> so it's going to lose four health on its next turn. As like, you know, the the hole in the top of its head bursts outwards, and it's like, and now the jaw that it's not saying anything, the jaw is sort of hanging, hanging off some some way, and it's just gushing out, and you can see, it's it doesn't quite know where it's looking. Um, what are you doing with the rest of your turn? Can I kick it away again? You can kick it away if you want. <laughs> We're with advantage. Oh, blindly. Uh, da, 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 da. Good job, too. Bastard. <laughs> no, fail. Fail. What did you roll? Fail. Uh, first one was a 76. Yeah. And the second one was 98. <laughs> Very close to a critical fail then. Mm. On both. But yeah, you it's sort of it's twitching and it seems to lock into place. So when you kick it, you're kicking a locked door this time and it's bang and you're like fuck. Um, oh no. And <laughs> Doc. What is the Doc doing? Is he, you can see when the Doc's like ah there's nothing left to throw, by the way. Um, in which case, the dog's just going to start backing up. Okay, back yeah. towards the, the the door, back into the dining room. Yeah, so you back up and you immediately you turn round and you'd see Wendy <laughs> with with a nap with a napkin <laughs> and a plate in her hand. over there. <laughs> Is Doc leaving the room? Yeah. Okay. So, it'll be quite interesting when we get to the next round. Yeah. <sighs> okay. I like every, everyone to make a speed check. Okay. Fuck off. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> It's not your scene, Doc. It's not your. It's fine. You go out and look after the drunk. Okay. Zam's rolled double o eight. Oh, nice, (laughs) nice. Okay. Um. Then I'll tee. I'll tee up what's going to happen first because Zam probably go next. Um. Okay. So what did Blaze get? Sixteen. Sixteen. 16. Oh, beautiful. Wendy? 37, which is a success. Oh, my word, Doc. 88. Uh, <laughs> uh-oh. He walks into the door. Okay. okay. He slips on the blood <laughs> and bashes his brains in. He, he, gets, he gets out. He gets out. That This is how the round's going to start. Because I'll, I will say with an 88, just for a bit of fun, you burst out. And you look up, and you can see Zam walking across, like with a bottle in his hand. And you see the, and- the something from behind the bar launch itself over the bar, about to start running towards Zam. And then you slip up on some blood, and you're prone. Zam, it's your prone turn. Mean, <laughs> prone <laughs> means I have to spend my action getting no, out. No, 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 no. Yeah, well, it, it could. It will. We'll put flavour on it. It's here, Phil. But um, Zam. You see the doc look surprised, fall over on his bum, <laughs> and you hear something behind you. Right. Can we establish how drunk is Zam at this moment in time? He sounded fairly drunk. He, he sounded you, fairly you were drunk. Playing it hard. Yeah, I was playing it really drunk, and now I really regret it. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got to lean into it now. Um, so, I, I will if you're right. If you want, really want to roll for this, Jim, we'll let the dice decide. No, yeah. there will be no stress on this roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Apart from what Jim experiences right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a fifty-fifty roll. Yeah. 
50 or above, you're fairly lucid. Yeah. Get below that, you may suffer disadvantage on your rolls depending on what you tell me you want to do. I'm not going to say you're outright just completely pickled, but you're feeling it. You're buzzing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, well, 50 or above yeah. was going to be you're okay. a success. Yeah. 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 So if you roll 88... Is that a critical success? It's, I will. I will say you're not getting. I'm not going to give you advantage on stuff, but you are. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I'm a, the, the, I'm, the 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 tears. He's kind were of real Zam. Up. They were he's real kind Zam. Of sobered up yeah. from the, the pain yeah. that he's. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So he, can he hear this thing coming towards him? He's heard something land on on carpet right, okay. behind him, and that was shortly after something said run. Um. I'm thinking of like spinning round and throwing the bottle at it. Okay. But I don't know whether I'm going to make the <clears throat> make the throw. Actually, can I ask a question? Ask all the questions you want. Is there any possibility that while Zam has been like walking away with the bottle in his hand, as he's been spilling any of it as he's been walking? If you were drunk, I would have said yes. Yeah, hmm. but so you're not he... drunk. Yeah, oh, so, no, <laughs> you got an eighty-eight. Right, okay. You are as sober as a judge, my friend. <laughs> yeah. You put oh, the man. lid on so not to spill right, any okay. when you cut away. <laughs> so what are we going to do to throw this bottle? If you're going to, well, I mean, this combat thing, or? yeah, it would be a combat roll or strength because yeah. it's quite far. It's far away at the moment. You got to go, It's got to get. You know, it's got to move a turn to get get to you. So as you turn, you see this thing is just, and it's just it's just stood up straight, just looking straight at you. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna throw the bottle at it. Okay. Make a combat check. Oh, 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 oh twenty-five. <laughs> Roll me, okay. Uh, roll me a d10 and half it. And half it. Oh, six. So that's three. Ooh. Okay. As you see, there's this Zamta turns around and launches it, and it <laughs> smashes it across across the face, and it's just sort smashes of smashes it over the android. Yeah. Yeah. It hits the so android. The android is now covered in alcohol. It's, yeah. it's got a bit of alcohol on it. And yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. there is, you can see you have cut it somewhat, but it's just stood there. Yeah. Okay. Now, is there anything else you want to do with your turn, Zam? Are you moving? Uh... <laughs> you'll be able to move, you'll be able to move closer or further away to get to dock. If I move closer to dock. Hmm. This thing is coming for me, yeah? We don't know, yeah. Oh, you know, you've turned round. Something was still, that was behind the yeah. bar was in front of the bar, and you threw, like, threw a bottle of booze at it. <laughs> basically, Zam, Zam had a flashback to the wedding where he may or may not have tried to throw a bottle at his mother, new mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, God. He missed, he missed. <laughs> this time, he succeeded. And, yes. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> catharsis for Zan. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the episode title. Yeah, I'm not going to run towards Doc. Okay, for fear of like just drawing this thing towards him, so I'm going to run away from Doc and this thing. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So you move. Towards the lounge area or the dining area? Uh, I think towards the dining area. Because okay. there'll be some cover with the tables as well. Then. Okay. Okay. And it is now Blaze's turn. As you see, this thing is just stuttering and sort of... It's looking very rough and... Oh, yeah. Oh, no, that'll be on its next turn. Um, 
Do I look round? Do I see Wendy? Wendy's there. <laughs> nice of you to join us. Um, oh, thought you could handle things. It's only a droid. Oh, please. <laughs> <Run>. <laughs> I'm having a bit of trouble with it. I think we should probably uh, come up with a exit strategy. Kill it, and then we'll exit. <laughs> All right. You got uh, one. You got one move left after that little discussion. What do you do? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I quick, does it take up a move to quickly check how much ammo I've got left? Yeah. Oh fuck off. Um. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I shoot, I shoot, I shoot. <laughs> okay. Shoot. Just a straight up roll this time. Five. Five. <laughs> roll your d10 damage. Eight. How do you finish this thing off, Blaze? Ad, 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 another. Ad... It's really like gushing, shoot in the like, dick. like there's <laughs> <laughs> there's android blood pouring from its chin and its head and its head looks and it's scrambling to try and sort of get up and trying to say things, but it's whatever uh, circuits I... are going on are gone. Can I try and like hit it on the bridge of its nose? Describe it. You're not that far from it, because it, so it would be literally just a straight. So after after like getting that little pep talk from Wendy, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> a belligerently gruff at her, and then take aim, shoot, and uh, it, it it splatters just... between its eyes. Yeah, and then I, I hope that it just sort of sits down immediately. It destroys, it basically destroys the centre of it, sort of, boosh, and a lot of it was just folding in on itself anyway, so it's like, boosh, 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 as it falls back and just slumps. I mean, it was quite a heavy like, unit, but... Like something out of scanners. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, kind of, boosh, it's like, like, just out the back, but there's like circuits and android blood, and it just slumps, slumps down. It's lovely, sort of, Michelin star, sort of, chef uniform, complete mess, absolute com- complete mess, but it's just sat there, just twitching. And, uh, Is that better, Wendy? Wendy, it's your turn. Um, I throw the napkin in its ring to blaze. <laughs> okay. Can I catch you, it? You yeah. might need this. Yeah, you can, you can catch it. And Wendy, Wendy, you do see now like there is the dead body as well. In a tactical vest, you notice. In a tactical security vest. Um, hmm. which I'd imagine looks a little bit like the the Kevlar from Robocop you know the, the police sort of uniforms is a bit more sort of bulky and padded and that kind of stuff um, however the the person is not like Robocop because they've been absolutely obliterated um, yeah. what else would you like to do Wendy are you just taking in the scene um, Yeah, I guess I was going to throw it and then just kind of turn around and walk back to the bar to carry on my conversation. You can walk back out. You can walk back yeah. out. Yeah. <laughs> so Wendy walks back out. You know, throw the throw the napkin. Clean yourself yeah. up. Yeah. <laughs> and you Straight walk back out. You walk out <laughs> and you see you see that Zam is walk. He's sort of like walking quickly amongst the dining tables. The dock is on his backside, <laughs> and the, and the barman. Is no longer behind the bar, and he's sprinting towards the doors. Which doors? The galley doors. Okay. He sort of. Um, it will take his whole sort of no, because what he does, he's sprinting there, and then at the last moment, he makes a sort of detour, and he's grabbing one of the tables, and he he passes. As you sat there, Doc, and you think he's like heading straight towards you, he diverts and grabs one of the tables and begins dragging it towards the galley doors. And he doesn't head towards you either, Zam. You see, you see him sort of 
start to he was running towards Doc and then he sort of almost angled towards you a bit but then he starts doing something else that is the android's turn Doc it's your turn over here Klaus as Wendy Wendy has stood there just behind you Hi. it won't be half your movement to get up but that would just be Okay, you can do that that's free if I get up mm. blood all over your <laughs> trousers now I think we need to kill this one too. And I've got I've got nothing. I'm going to move <laughs> over to a. If I can find another table nearby that I can move over to that might have something mm. on it, I can use as a weapon. Okay, you um, you move over to a nearby table. You do see something. Is it a dining table? Are you heading more towards a lounge? Are you getting out of dodge? Dine, dining. The dining. Well, yeah. Yeah. And you see some cutlery, and you see some food, like some mitten some nice meals that have never been touched these this is smells horrible um, do I see a steak knife you do you, you get a can steak I... knife yeah you can pick that up and chuck it because at... <laughs> I've been really good at chucking stuff <laughs> I mean I will say from where this thing is it, you can you, I will allow you to do that but it will be with disadvantage I mean because oh. you're moving so quick you're trying to do all these things rushed if you want to do it at a disadvantage remember you will get stressed if you miss PJ you don't have to do it this turn. But PJ loves the dice. I've done it. Uh, okay, so that... Oh! This was a combat roll, was it? Combat roll with disadvantage. 29 for success. I rolled a 19 and a 29. <laughs> oh! Okay, roll me a d10 and half it. Uh, that one. <laughs> Two again, so that's one. <laughs> okay, as you ah! sticks in its back, <laughs> sticks in its I shoulder blade, the and, and it's still trying trying to move this table. Okay, he's just tidying. <laughs> this no, no, he's not. This round, one more round, one more round. Um, everyone, make a speed check. What's that dice? We don't get stressed for speed checks, do we? No, no. Uh, 47. 47. Wendy? 25. 25? 25, beautiful. Uh, Blaze? 56. 56. <laughs> Doc? Also 25. 25. Ooh. Let's have a roll off. Each roll a d10. Who gets the highest? <laughs> Zero? Five. <laughs> So it'll be the dock because that was a ten, Wendy. <laughs> and w- with that, the dock goes first. <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, okay. Um, do these tables have tablecloths on them? There you yeah. go. Yeah. Okay. I am gonna pull, try, and <laughs> sweep off the tablecloth. Yeah. Just check it. Okay, it all fell over. <laughs> And then just leap, run at the android to try and wrap it in the tablecloth. Okay. okay. Can I can I pile in and assist with that? Because that's really what I wanted you to do. Is that is that so, what you both want to yeah, do? That's what I was thinking. Okay. That, that so what what are you trying to? Are you trying to basically wrap this thing up and take it down? Yeah. Okay. So then, maybe you wrap and I tackle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. How shall I do this? Okay. So. I will allow. It will be a strength check with advantage, because you both roll twenty-five. It's up to you, and you're both planning to do the same thing. Talk to each other, describe how you want to do this, and we'll see who makes the roll. Right. Or do you each want to roll for it? And without the, it to be a straight roll. It'll be a straight roll, but I will count this What's as a band. What's your strength? Um, if I include my athletics, then 43. I think you should roll with advantage. Okay. I'm not sure I can include my military training because this feels like an off-the-books manoeuvre. You've got, athlet- you've got athletics, haven't you? I've got athletics, yeah, cool. 43. Yeah. 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 Okay. Hopefully... 
Would you like the 21 or the 24? <laughs> you see this, um, the, the doctor... He's a good... <laughs> he starts moving over towards this thing and Wendy knows exactly what he's doing and they move and she just she almost pushes him towards it and uses it to wrap this thing round and you wrap it up completely and take it down on the floor. It's completely covered in this sheet and just on the floor. You've you've rugby tackled it to the ground. <clears throat> uh Zam, you had a failed it, I believe, didn't you? Yeah, I got um forty seven, yeah. Okay. Then it's the creature's turn. Well, or, or it's the android's turn. Klaus's turn. Let's let's call him by his name. Can Wendy just begin? Yeah. Shh, Klaus, it's okay. It's okay, Klaus. As this Shh. thing is, is trying to struggle against you, um, it will make a contested strength roll against both of you. Okay. So it's going to re it's gonna roll. It rolled a sixty eight, which is a fucking fail so it fails so you don't, it's not even contested so it's trying to sort of move but the way you've wrapped it up um, you can just hear it sort of going keep the door closed keep the door closed run keep the door closed we will Klaus we will <laughs> and that is uh, that is Klaus's turn Zam you saw this you heard this you don't know where Blaze is <laughs> oh, I'm going to run over to Wendy in the dock nail gun in hand and I'm going to try and hit the androids with the nail gun I think he's trying to help us make a combat roll with advantage please Zam because you'll be close quarters on this combat roll with advantage yeah yeah? Mm mm-hmm Well, that's 78. Oh, and that's 41, which is my combat. Roll me a, a D10 and half it. Uh, that's a 1. Yeah, so that'd just be a 1. <laughs> yeah. So that so runs up and hold just... Go chunk! Cons- <laughs> consume this! <laughs> and it just goes... Ka-tunk. As it's still twitching. And it's still moving. So, close door. Run. Run. Consume. Close door. As it's stuttering. As it has run up and shot it point blank with the nail gun. I really hope that didn't happen at the about. wedding. <laughs> yeah, it was a crazy wedding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, meanwhile, inside, Blaze. You were um, just there with a, what's left of an android. Can I check... How much ammo have yeah. I got left? Yeah. You have how much ammo? You have two shots left. Now, actually, how many shots did you take? I think you took four, didn't you? I think it, I was, think it was four. Four. Because it you, was two two misses. You have one, one shot left. One underneath. Yeah. And, and then, then another the... one. Yeah. Yeah. So you have, yeah. you have one. Yeah. Okay. And when you look, you do see that like there is a spent casing as well. Oh, so there was only five shots in the. There was there was six shots, and you took four. It was fired on. It it was fired once. Uh, okay. Before okay, you okay. got there. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and can I can I check the the body of the security guy? I'm yeah. not sure what he. Do you doing. see? <laughs> you see um, the name Denny on his on his name badge. Um, uh, poor Denny. I will say there's there's another clip containing six shots. Yoink. Yep. There is uh, a pair of um, manacles. They're sort of handcuffs. They look like security sort of handcuffs. Uh, yoink. Um, and that's really Sorry, all. Yo- yeah, I'm, I'm looting the corpse. Yeah, looting the corpse. There's nothing really in terms of... Um, actually, well, no, you do see a wallet. There's nothing really in terms of like credits and things. You do see there is like a an echelon sort of staff credit card thing within this. 
And you do notice there's a photo of a loved one. There is a photo in there that you notice, and and when you take it out, and you look at it, and you just think, oh, and it's just a, a picture of like, like four, um, sort of rough and tumble. There's sort of three three men, and and a woman. They they're just holding up beers. It definitely you can recognise the sort of this is the this is the squad. This is that kind of yeah. you know this is a night off, and they've all sort of like got their thumbs up. Um, and Denny's there, Denny's there. I mean, one thing you do notice, I'll give you this for free. Denny's been dead for weeks. You can tell from the way that corpse... It, I mean, he's been dead, you know, but the body itself, the decomposition, is bad. Um, another thing catches your eye on the photo. You're like, oh, yeah, you know, it's a, a, a cool lot. It may not mean anything to you, but one of them, who's holding their thumb up, has a tattoo on their forearm. It's a tattoo of a sort of a Scandinavian Nordic like hammer, like Thor's hammer, with two snakes wrapping around it on either side. And that's when we're gonna end this week's session. Oh damn it. <laughs> ah <laughs> Welcome to the Icarus, everyone. There's a lot of mystery aboard this ship. You have been listening to Safe Space, a tabletop role-playing podcast featuring the Mothership game system by Tuesday Night Games. Playing the game were Jim Bamfield as Zam Brazel, Lizzie Boyle as Wendy, Gavin Mitchell as Dick Sloan, PJ Montgomery as Dr. Bill Forrest and Vince Hunt as the Game Warden. Podcast produced and edited by Vince Hunt. In-game music composed by Tabletop Audio. Visit tabletopaudio.com to discover a world of ambient music you can use in your home games. The Safe Space theme was composed by Elliot Red. Find more of Elliot's work on YouTube. To find out more about the Mothership RPG system, visit mothershiprpg.com. Follow the show on social media at Safe Space RPG. And for more podcasts, visit lawbreaker.podbean.com. This has been a Lawbreaker Radio production. <laughs>